Now I would like to take you to the word of God as documented for our good. Praise God. And so this morning I'm going to be speaking on sin is easy to avoid. Sin is easy to avoid. A lot of people may not agree with me, but maybe after this sermon they are going to come into agreement with me that sin is easy to avoid. It can be avoided. It is very, very easy. It doesn't matter the kind of sin that is right before you. It doesn't matter the kind of temptation with which you are being tempted. You can avoid sin. You can avoid sin. It's very easy. It's very easy. Praise God. I find it very funny when people blame their mistakes on the devil. I find it very, very funny. And I don't know if it amuses you sometimes, if it's also funny to you that somebody will deliberately do something and will push the blame to the devil. Say, it is the devil. It is the devil. It is the devil that made me do it. Like, seriously? It is the devil that made you do it. I, I know that if you analyze it critically, you will come into terms that there are people who are apparently very weak. Uh, they find it uh, difficult to resist the powers of darkness, uh, the power of the, of the devil in question. And now, the, the thing here is not about the power uh, responsible for people committing sin. It is about the people um, willingly giving out their own right to say no to the devil. Hallelujah. There is um, the power, there is a power that God gave to all of us. You have that power, I have that power. That power is your right. I have the same power, it is my right. And God can't take that power away from us because it's our right. The devil cannot take that power away from you because it's your right unless you willingly and voluntarily give that power to the devil. It is the power of choice. You are responsible for your choices. You are responsible for the choices you make. And blaming the devil for your mistakes really doesn't make any sense because you have the power to say no. You had the power to, to say, no, I'm not going to do this. You had the power to refuse to do the same thing you've been convicted of, the same thing that uh, everyone is blaming you for, the same thing that has landed you into a very big trouble. You had the power to desist from it. You have the power to pull away and avoid all the talks going around and all the trouble that has, uh, uh, you know, compassed you, uh, the trouble that has compassed you about. Hallelujah. You have the power. God has given us the power to make choices. And he said, I have set before you today life and death. I have given you the power to choose. But because I cannot impose anything on you, I suggest my son I suggest my daughter that you choose life. Choose life. I suggest you choose life. I suggest you choose life. Okay, I command you in worst case scenario, I command you to choose life. But at the end of the day, it is up to you to choose uh, life, nor death. Okay, the commandment was given unto us. It was just a commandment to help us. It was a command given by somebody who knows life better. Someone who knows that if we don't live in a certain way, we're going to fall into a very big problem. It's a command from somebody who understands life, who knows the end from the beginning. So when we choose to obey, that's our business. If we obey, it's for our good. But if we choose to obey, it's our business. And then we will bear the consequences when the time comes. So when people blame the devil, it is the devil, it is the devil. I know the devil uh, has been a liar from the beginning. Uh, he's not a force to reckon with. But people uh, 
unreasonably push uh, unnecessary blames to the devil when they are actually the ones responsible for their own decision, responsible for their own action, responsible for everything they blame the devil for. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 4 verse 17, the, the word of God says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. James chapter 4 verse 17, to him that knoweth to do good, but doeth it not, to him it is a sin. It is a sin to know to do good, but choose not to do it. It is a sin to know to do good, but choose not to do it. It can either be right or wrong. There are these two things, right or wrong. Is either you are right in your action, in your words, in your lifestyle, or you are wrong in all these areas. There is nobody who is up to the age of accountability that will deny that they do not know right nor wrong. At least I believe you came from a very good uh, family background. Your father taught you well. Your mom used to rebuke you. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. This is what we do as, uh, as parents. We, we, we raise our children, teach them to do the right thing, teach them to stay out of trouble, teach, teach them to be, not to be, you know, reckless, teach them to be responsible, teach them to do the right thing. These are the things we do as parents. Growing up, you must have been taught many times at home, taught many times in your, in, in school, taught many times in the Sunday school. If you were not a Christian growing up, maybe, uh, you are a Muslim, you must have been taught also to live, life, to live well, to honor your father and mother, to respect your elders, to, to respect people, to live responsibly. You must have been taught. You must have been taught. It's so fascinating that so many things people, are, uh, people have been found guilty of are things they were once told not to do. We were born... Uh, we were born knowing right and wrong. Now, you might argue that with me, saying, what about children? They know nothing. In our DNA, in our DNA, in our DNA is encoded, is encoded the ability to decipher, to know between uh, wrong and right. The ability is there. So, we were born with the ability to know right and wrong, the ability to differentiate between right and wrong, encoded, encoded, encoded in our DNA. So as we grow up, we can easily tell that this thing is wrong, this thing is right, is, is, is in us. Where did we get that from? When the first man and woman, our first parents, our first parents, Adam and Eve, when they, when they fell out with God by disobeying him, God said to him, uh, God said to them before uh, they, the, the, they, they fell from grace, say, you may eat of all the trees in the garden, but of this particular tree, you should not eat all right, so you know the tree of life and the tree, you know, uh, you know, of knowledge of good and evil. That was the very tree they ate, and uh, from then, men became responsible for their actions. Men became responsible for their actions. We are humans, and uh, I won't classify us as animals. Animals may do whatever they want to do. Dogs can be dogs can be stupid. They can do anything. A goat is a goat. Monkey is monkey. Uh, a monkey can do whatever. Uh, a chicken is a chicken. They can, you know, mess around, poop around, do whatever they want. But you, as a human, you have your your conscious your consciousness is higher. You have a better understanding. You are not monkey. You are not a gorilla. You are not uh, like chimpanzee. You have, you have sense, you have, 
you have sense, you have brain, you can tell, uh, you can differentiate between right and wrong. Okay, so you were born with the ability to differentiate between right and wrong. And you got that in your DNA. So for you to know what is right and do it, for you to know what is right and do it means you are you are you are reasonable seriously you cannot do what is wrong knowing that it is wrong and push the blame to the devil there is no devil to blame there is no devil to blame people are so funny people are so funny Somebody may be caught in the act of adultery and they say it is the devil. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Somebody is caught in the act of adultery and they say, oh, it is the devil. Hey, it is the devil. How is it the devil? Was it the devil that stripped you naked? What is that, what, was it the devil that uh, removed your clothes? Was it the devil? Was it the devil? Was it the devil that is responsible? Somebody is caught in the act of adultery. They say, oh, 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 oh. They say, oh, oh no, it is the devil. It is the devil. It is, how is it the devil? It was, it was the choice you made. It was the choice you made. Leave the devil out of it. The devil may tempt you, but you have the right to say no, I don't want. You have the power to say no, I don't want. Why didn't you use that power? You carried your right and gave to the devil. And now you are blaming the devil. That you were caught in the act of adultery. Huh? People are blaming the devil. Yeah, it is the devil. Yeah, it is the devil. It is the devil that made it happen. It is the devil. People are just blaming the devil unnecessarily. People are just blaming the devil unnecessarily. Ah, it is the devil that made it happen. It is the devil that made me do this. It is the devil that made me do that. Like seriously? It is the devil. Somebody is caught in the act of stealing. And they say, oh, it is the devil. It is the devil. Are you serious? Somebody would sit and contemplate on how to steal. Knowing that it is wrong to steal. But when they are caught, they say, oh, it is the devil. It is the devil. Yeah, it can be the devil because you took your right and gave to him. You could have resisted the urge to fornicate. If you had, re if you had resisted the urge to fornicate, you wouldn't be struggling with uh, the health challenge you have now. This is not to make... Anyone who has STD to feel bad. But it's just to arm you. To give you a message to pass across to others. And as a matter of fact, I pray for you to be healed. In Jesus mighty name. I love you more than anything. I pray for you to be healed. And free from your affliction. In Jesus mighty name. People get involved in accident. And they will say, oh, it is the devil. It is the devil. The devil made you had uh, or made you have an accident, but you were the one driving recklessly. You were the one driving above the speed limit, but you say it's the devil. You 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 were the one beating the robots, and you get. Uh, into an accident, a head-on collision with another vehicle, and you say it is the devil. Your leg, one of your legs, uh, got amputated because of accident. You say it's the devil, but you were the one speeding. 
You were the one speeding just to show the other road users that your, your, your engine is, is fire, is fire for fire. That your car can speed, can, you know, run more than, more than Ferrari. And you say it is the devil. He that knoweth to do good, but doeth it not, to that person it is a sin. As you're watching me now, you know what is good and what is right. You know that speaking evil of somebody else is bad. You don't have to. See, I, I can go the whole week seeing people, counseling and praying for people. I have been to many places, seen a lot of faces as a minister. I have spoken to thousands, I've spoken to hundreds of people, I've spoken to a lot of people. And I've met, I meet, nobody meets people more than pastors and ministers. Like on a very close uh, range. I can tell you that those who speak evil of other people does not go far. Does not go far. What you owe somebody else, no matter what their condition might be. First of all, it's none of your business. It's not your concern. What you owe them is to pray for them. Do not make them a subject of discussion. Do not make them a subject of discussion. Gossip is not right. It's not right. In worst case uh, scenario, rejoicing when something bad is happening to somebody. The Bible says it clearly that when you rejoice, when you rejoice for the misery, the suffering of another, God will change his mind. Especially when God is the one dealing with the person. You will start rejoicing. God will change his mind and turn against you. Isn't that strange? Isn't that strange? Everything pertaining to life and godliness. Everything we need to live life peacefully, harmoniously, are all written in the word of God. Sometimes I wonder what Bible people read and what scripture they are taught from in their various assemblies. See, it's not all about it. receive, blessing, receive, enemies, die by fire. Oh, no. We need to come down to the basics and teach the word of God. Do you know that if you rejoice because of someone else's suffering, God will get angry and turn against you. Do you know that? Do you know that one? That is why a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people are having problems. They don't know where it came from. They pray, they pray, they fast, but they're having unnecessary problems. This one is not the devil attacking you. The Bible says God will get angry and turn away you know, from that person and face you. Some sufferings are not the devil behind it. Everything are devil. Everything devil. Everything devil. We know he's a bad man. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He's everything evil contained in him. But he's not the one responsible for everything. People must take responsibility for their actions and stop blaming the devil. If you know what to do, if you know what is good, do it. If you know what is good, do it. He that knoweth to do good, but doeth it not, to him is a sin. All right? So just so you don't forget everything I have said. How do you avoid sin if it's that easy it's very 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 easy now how do you avoid sin how do you avoid sin you must understand the damage sin could do to somebody's destiny you must understand the damage sin can do to somebody's life bible says righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people 
Sin brings reproach. The world is suffering today because of sin. Sin of corruption, sin of theft, uh, all manner of sin. The land is polluted. Sin of murder, the Bible says you should not murder, you should not kill. It is in the commandment. The Ten Commandments I read for you is all there. The world is the way it is because of sin. So many families are in disarray because of sin. So many people's destinies have been sacrificed on the altar of sin, altar of adultery, altar of fornication, altar of stealing, altar of killing. You don't just kill and say, ah, that's it, it's gone. The blood that was shed cries unto God. When somebody kills, the blood of the person they kill cries to God against the person. That was what happened when Cain killed Abel. The blood of Abel cried unto God, crying for vengeance. Crying for vengeance. Nobody kills and just get away, assume that oh, all is well. The blood that was shed never stops crying. It never stops crying. Vengeance against you. Vengeance against your children. It is there. People who kill for jealousy. People who kill for whatever reason. The blood that they shed cries. People who kill through abortion. Because the baby that was aborted, the baby that is aborted, is a human being. Don't tell me it's just a, a blood, a fetus. He's a, he's, he's a human being. I remember when my wife was pregnant. We went for ultra scan, and then when they put the machine on her, on her stomach, we could clearly see the baby, as small as, as tiny as, the fit was as tiny as, as it was. It was busy, running, swimming all over, swimming all over, swimming all over. Nine months after, he was born, and he became a, 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 a baby, a living, a living, he was born a living child. A big boy. Abortion does not make you uh, un, unpregnant. It only makes you the mother of a dead baby. This is not for you to feel guilty. It is for you to, you know, you need some sort of atonement for your sin. If you haven't, I, I charge you to take at least seven days fast and pray. In that prayer, do not bind any devil. Do not ask for anything except forgiveness. Lord, I am sorry. Forgive. You have to fast between three to seven days. Ask God, if you have committed abortion, Father, I am sorry. Ask him to forgive you. And cleanse you. The media will not speak the truth about it. But the truth is that it is somebody who should be alive running around. Or maybe taking care of you now. That was aborted. That you killed. You need to ask God to cleanse you. You need to add, you need to add, You need to fast between three to seven days. Ask God to forgive you. And at the end of your prayer, you can fast three days, you can fast seven days. Ask God to forgive. At the end of the prayer, if you like, go and borrow money. Go and borrow money. Buy things and send to motherless babies home. Go and feed children on the street. Go and feed them. Give to children who are destitute. Give to children in the motherless baby's home. Give to children in the orphanage. Uh, uh, don't, uh, don't just go looking for People on the internet advertise often, often. Just go in real life. Or you know somebody who caters for these children. God, in fact, do it yourself. Look for one around you. Give. That the children may be taken care of. You know, children are very spiritual. They are spirits. Children are very spiritual. If you bless them, their spirit will bless you. All right? And your sin will be forgiven. I hope I said something. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. So I was saying that sin is easy to avoid. How do you avoid it? 
Bible says, if you know to do good and uh, do, do it not, it is a sin to you. If you know to do good but fail to do it, it is a sin to you. Now, to avoid sin is knowing what is sinful and consciously, consciously deciding not to do it. Knowing what is evil and consciously deciding not to do it. Knowing what is sinful and consciously deciding not to do it. It's as simple as that. It may be hard, but you should try. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle. We wrestle. We don't romance with principalities and powers. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers. Of course, the devil wants you to sin so you can be at loggerheads with God. That's what he wants. That's what our battle is against. Principalities and powers. And you have to resist them. The devil is so good in creating opportunities for people to sin. The devil will create the most suitable time for people to commit sin. When the sin is committed, oh, it is the devil. Oh, it is the devil. When they had the power to decide not to fall into that sin. Sin can take you to hell. Sin can destroy your life. Sin can damage a nation. Sin can destroy your marriage. Sin can destroy your work with the Lord. Sin can ground you spiritually. Sin can imprison you forever. Sin can make you a prisoner of the enemy. Sin can cause affliction in the body. Sin can destroy the soul of a man. Sin is a reproach to any people and should be avoided in any way. Should be avoided in any way. It should be avoided in any way. You see the way you wear mask on your, on your face to protect you from airborne viruses. The same way you should put a mask on your, on your senses so that when that tendency comes, when that urge comes, when that temptation comes, you may be able to resist and be safe. Sin is a reproach to any people. Sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness is also a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So it is that easy, 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 easy to avoid sin. It is easy to avoid unnecessary problems, unnecessary fight, unnecessary trouble. It is so easy. It is so easy. It's just up to you to say, no, no, no. I'm not going to do this. Mm -mm. Never. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the spirit of God dwells in me. My body is the temple of God. It is up to you to say that. And when the devil tempts you. And tempts you, tempt you again and again and again. You refuse to oblige. He will kindly walk away from you. And this is how you earn stars in the spirit. This is how you Spiritual growth is not by studying the word of God, reading the Bible from page from the from from uh, page to page from the beginning to the end. That's not how spiritual growth takes place. Spiritual growth takes place by you being able to resist temptations. Spiritual growth takes place by you being able to resist the temptations of the enemy using the word of God that is inside of you. When sin comes, you say, no, I won't sin. This particular sin, piam, the devil will walk away. You rise in the spirit. That is how we grow. That is how we grow. I know people who have read Bible from cover to cover many times, but they still act like spiritual babies. They still act like babies in the Lord. 
they still act like babies in the Lord, even though they have read Bible from cover to cover. Every single page is full of marker and, and a pen and all that. The Bible, even the interior of their Bible looks so, so, so dirty because of marker and pen. If you ask them, they, they've read the Bible from cover to cover. Yet, they behave like babies. They behave like they are not mature spiritually. In fact, many of them are not mature spiritually because that's not how spiritual growth works. It's not how it works. You have to be tested. You have to be tested. When you are tested and you overcome, then you rise. When you are tested and you overcome, then you rise. The truth that you may have not heard is that anointing does not come by just reading the word of God, fasting and praying there. You have to be tested. You have to be tempted. They will provoke you. They will annoy you. They will push you to your limit. They will push you to the wall. Your ability to resist is what determines the power you will command. I'm telling you, you have to be tempted. That was why Jesus went through that process. He was tempted many times. Many times. So the more temptation you overcome, the more you rise in the spirit, the more your prayer becomes effective, the more effective as a believer you will become. When you grasp this reality, this fact, you pray temptation come. Temptations come. Where are the temptations? You overcome. When you overcome, you rise in the spirit. You get more ranks in the spirit. That is when the devil command that is when you command the devil's respect. That's how you command the devil's respect. It's not by praying in tongues, fire up and down. That's not how you command his respect. You command the devil's respect. You tell him, devil, ta, get out of here. And he will jump. He will skip and run away. When he tempts you again and again and again, you, you stand. That is when he will respect you. He will respect you. Any territory you enter and command on clean spirits, all of you out in the name of Jesus. They will take, they will pick race. They will run. Say, this one we cannot mess with this person. They will see your rank in the spirit. How do you determine that a soldier, uh, a, a, a soldier must be promoted? It is when they go through tough battles, when they go through things, when they fight, when they Go through so many things. That's how you rise to the top. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that after today, the devil will begin to fear you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So it is not that many of us does not know what is wrong and what is right and to do the right thing. It's just that at times we feel overpowered. That is where prayer is needed. There is power in you to resist. You need, you need grace. You need prayer for that power to be doubled. So that you can easily, easily say to the devil, come on, get away from here. You cannot ruin my work with the Lord. You cannot blind me spiritually. You cannot steal from me. You cannot destroy my reputation and the image that took me many years to build, to create. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask you to lift up your voice right now and begin to pray. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, give me power to resist sin. Give me power, O oh God. Help me. Ask the Lord to help you in the name of Jesus. Ask him to help you. 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 In the name of Jesus, ask God for help. Ask God for help. In Jesus' mighty name, grace to always do the right thing. I know what is right. And I must do it. I know what is right. And I must do it. I know what is right. And I must do it. I know what is wrong. I can never do it. Never. I know what is wrong, but I can never do it. I know what is wrong. I can never do it. 
For he that knoweth to do good, but doeth it not, to him it is a sin. I want to be free of sin. I do not want the devil to have a ground in my life. I do not want the devil to have something to use against me to say no. This person has given me a ground in his life or in her life. Prayer. Give me grace, O Lord, to be able to resist sin when I am tempted to sin. Give me grace, O God, to resist sin when I am tempted to sin. Give me grace, O Lord, to resist sin when I am tempted to sin. In the name of Jesus. Pray with understanding that if you die in your sin, you will go to hell. Hell is a real place. You will go to hell and burn for all eternity. Ask the Lord to help you, please, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you for your word we've had today. It has been planted into our hearts like a seed. I pray to germinate and bear fruit unto everlasting life. I ask, O oh God, for grace upon all of us. That we may stand firm in the Lord. That we may be able to resist sin. All temptations, O oh God, that we may overcome. In the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray for everyone watching. You shall not go to hell. In the name of Jesus. The devil shall not find a legal ground in your life. To oppress you, to attack you. Nor to destroy nor kill in your life in jesus mighty name i speak a blessing over you in jesus most precious name we pray amen and amen hallelujah in jesus mighty name let's share the grace and fellowship may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forever Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now, this is Chelsea Dozy from Chosen Temple International and uh, the president of Chelsea Dozy Ministries. It is well with you.